When John pokes his head inside the opened door to the apartment, he can hear the sound of violent retching. He sees Brian and Freddy standing in the doorway to what he guesses is the bathroom. Oh dear, Freddy mutters and disappears into the room out of John's line of sight. It must have been a bad oyster. No shit, comes Roger's furious hoarse shriek. He lets out a pitiful moan before more retching noises echo out into the hallway. Brian carefully pushes the door almost shut, leaving it just a smidge open before turning to John. The tall man looks quite pale himself and smiles apologetically. I'm sorry, John. I don't think tonight's going to work for uh, further activities. Can I offer you a cup of tea instead? Loud curses can be heard from the bathroom, and John takes a step back, holding up his hands. No, you really don't have to. I'm fine. Take care of Roger instead. Nonsense. Brian smiles, quickly catching up to John with his long legs and ushers him into the kitchen. Freddy's got it. I'm no good with vomit anyway. He gently but firmly pushes John down onto a stool and goes to start the electric kettle. Oh, grey? Green? Some of Freddy's weird oriental stuff? John takes a curious look around the kitchen. It's open and modern and wow, they really have a nice apartment. The rent must really be hell. Eh, he says, still a bit tipsy and also slightly lost. A natural reaction when your sexy plans suddenly change to drinking tea while someone's being violently sick in the other room. Earl Grey, please? It's pleasantly warm in the room and he removes his suit jacket, hanging it on the back of the chair. Brian fixes tea for John and himself. He also prepares a mug of the oriental stuff and a cup of green tea. <laughs> Rog hates green tea he explains as he sits down next to John. But I think it should do him good after this trial. Poor guy. John shudders when he hears another wail from the bathroom coupled with Freddy's cheerful voice. This is a nice place you've got. Thanks. Brian smiles and he's so pretty that John has to hide his lovesick face behind his teacup. We wouldn't be able to afford it if not for Freddy's job, he frowns. As it is now... Him and Rog have to pay for most of it, since most of my PhD payment goes to study fees. It's a bummer. John nods and drinks his tea. They spend some minutes drinking tea and talking quietly. Then there's a sudden ruckus from the bathroom. I can't believe this! First the fucking car, the no Brighton, then I have to slave away at work all week. It's not bloody fair! Roger's roar makes the walls vibrate and John jumps while Brian just rolls his eyes and continues to calmly sip his tea. Darling, that's not... I have barely even seen you all week and I haven't chatted with John at all and I was so excited for tonight and then this fucking happens. What the fuck? John feels strangely giddy. Roger had been excited to meet him. Why do we even have to go for fucking oysters to begin with? Oysters, Fred! Why? Why couldn't we have had a normal, normal date food like, say, pizza or pasta or literally anything that's not a disease-bearing slime monster? But dear, oysters are supposed to be Aphrodite. Do I look like I'm fucking turned on to you? A pause, and then there's more retching. John finishes his tea and gets up from his chair. I should go, he says. Thanks for the tea. This time Brian doesn't protest, but nods and follows him back to the front door. I'm really sorry about this, Brian says, and reaches back to pull his hair free from his bun. Bouncing luscious curls fall down to softly rest on his shoulders and frame his perfect face, and John's throat is very dry. Yeah, he squeaks, before clearing his throat, blushing fiercely. No, I, I mean, don't be. It's not your fault. He slips on his shoes, carefully trying to not stare at Brian's beautiful anything. Fuck, he's so disappointed he didn't get to see him and the others naked. Uh, say hi to Fred and Rog for me, yeah? I hope he'll get better soon. Brian grins. Oh, he will. Rog is tough as nails. He'll be fine. He steps close and pulls John into a tight hug. Thank you, he breathes in his ear. For tonight, we had a lovely time. Me too. John almost wheezes. Goodbye, Dickie, Freddy calls from the bathroom, and John frowns. Dickie? Where did that come from? He calls back anyway, and then opens the door. Be careful, Brian says in that low, melodious voice, and John nods. And I'll talk to you tomorrow?
John nods again and Brian smiles and gives him a light kiss on the lips. Then he leans back, gives John another adorable smile and closes the door. John's sure he's wearing the goofiest grin ever as he skips down the stairs. He's sighing and smiling like a lovesick teenager on the metro. He basically floats up the stairs to his own apartment and dances through the door. Then he realises. He's left his jacket at Brian's apartment with his phone in his pocket. Fuck everything. <laughs>